The next step, uh, you have three watering troughs and feeder troughs. They are all sealed, so all three can be used for a water uh, if need be. These two longer slots on the end is where the unit drops into. So we have a, um, the trough installed on the front. It slips into these two longer slots here. There's a couple ways of doing this. This is adjustable. So you can, for younger birds, put it down lower and lock it in. Uh, this is just kind of trial and error. What I normally like doing for the first five days is to just drop this all the way down, lock it shut, and use some small watering units inside here for the first couple of days. That gets them off to a good start, gets a little growth to them, so they're not apt to crawl through some of these holes. But you can do either one. So I recommend to start them off with some small waters and feeders in here. In about three to five days, go ahead and let them start using the outside troughs. But we'll go ahead and assemble all, side, all four sides, which are pretty much the same. Drop it in, let it fall down. I'm going to close up all the units right now because I'm going to use some portable waters and feeders for the first couple of days with the chicks. So we'll put the last one on. If uh, the trough will not go into the, two long, the long slot on this side and the long slot on this side, it's because the plastic petition has moved to the back a little bit. Just move it on up to the front snug so the back slot is open so this hanger will go right into it. You have your clean out tray and what I would recommend is to have some newspapers but what I do is fold it out. You want to have several layers uh, in, the, uh, in the tray and it's always important to kind of make sure they lay flat because if they're up too high, they catch the wire and it rolls it all and, up. Uh, another thing you can do also is to take some hydrated hot lime or hydrated lime. This is the lime that you put on a garden or whatnot. And it'll absorb moisture and the smell. And it also kills germs. So three things it'll do. And you can just take it lightly, put it over the paper. Usually a cup is good enough, and then uh, you take the unit, and on the bottom of the tray, there's a sliding rack and a sliding rack, and it just slides in. With baby chicks, cleaning it out once a day is usually okay. Uh, as your chicks mature and, and uh, more manure builds up, uh, you know, you might want to clean it twice a day. This will come with your brooder also. This is a substitute for newspaper. You get one of these as a trial offer. Uh, that's what this is. They use it to wrap some of the equipment in, but you can also use this uh, if you want to. But basically, again, it absorbs moisture uh, and kills bacteria. Uh, but again, this is just to be used one time. I normally have not used it because it's folded, has creases, it's hard to lay down and it gets caught up in the unit. So I prefer just to use newspaper. And then the last thing we have are the tops to the unit. You have two tops and they go on the back. And then you have the front, they interchange, so it doesn't really matter which one you use for the front or back. And they've got a little lip there, so they kind of stay secure on the unit. So if you're wanting to get into the unit, you can do this to kind of feed or water or look at your chicks. 
So before you're ready for your chicks, the day before, or, or before that even, you need to test out the unit. You need to get it preheated to make sure it's at the right temperature. Again, this unit is designed to raise chicks for the first two weeks and really not up till over four weeks. Uh, you'll want to plug in the unit. So I've plugged in the unit. And as you can see, everything's working properly. We have the night light on and then we have the bulb indicating that we have heat and the elements are working. So you'll smell a little bit of uh, smell the first time you set up the unit. And then if you've had it in storage, you'll have chick dust on it too, that that'll burn off and also create a little bit of a smell. So that, that smell is normal until it gets heated up and burns that, that oil off or the chick fuzz. So what we will do next, we want to put the tops on. So we have the unit heating up. So what we're going to do, first of all, we just uh, put this wafer, uh, the unit about halfway in the middle. We're going to heat it up and see where we're at, if we're too hot or too cold. The unit should be inside. It, it should be either in the basement or an extra room or garage or a shed that is pretty tight. Normally when people are starting baby chicks, it's in the spring or late winter, uh, early summer when it's still pretty cool and also depends on the the area that you're in. The room probably shouldn't be lower than 40 or 50 degrees, uh, typically. Uh, but the most important thing is not to have a draft. The other thing, uh, location for your brooder, uh, you would want to make sure if you're using it in a shed or a barn, to make sure that you put out rat poison, poison, uh, poison for mice or any rodents. Uh, well within a month or two months before that and that you've continued to put out poison. You want to make sure uh, that you do not have any rodent problems because they will come in and clean out the whole brooder within a night. So it's important to make sure that uh, that's a pretty tight building. So we've done a test. We've let this heat up for about 15 to 20 minutes and right now it looks like it's at about 90 degrees so what I want to do is loosen the wing nut and turn it counterclockwise to increase the temperature so I've turned the wafer two times and then I've turned the wing nut to lock it in place so it's going to heat up a little bit more so we're going to wait another 15 or 20 minutes and see if I can get the temperature up to a hundred and then also I want to make sure that the floor is up to a hundred also. So now we're coming back looking at the brooder. Perfect. It's right at a hundred or ninety-nine. That's exactly where I want it to be. Now this one is a little over a hundred. So I'm going to maybe adjust this to try to make sure that this, the temperature that I'm really wanting is on the floor level to make sure it's right at 100 back here. So I really, I like going by this temperature on the floor rather than the temperature right here. So you can play with that, but generally about 100 degrees on the floor level for the first two or three days. If they get too warm, they're going to move out to the front. And one thing you can always look, even though you have thermometers to check, generally if I look in the brooder and I see all the chicks to the front, I know I've got it too hot. If all the chicks are to the back kind of huddling, I know they're too cold. If the chicks are out here eating and drinking, some are back here and they're all moving around different places, I know that it's pretty well regulated evenly for their temperature that they're comfortable with at this stage of growth. Okay, so our brooder is assembled. We have everything set to go. We have it plugged in. We've tested it out. We have the uh, temperature about where we want it. We have uh, the thermometer that we used in the floor to kind of test the temperature to make sure we have about 100 degrees right back down in here in the floor area where they go to get heat. So 
We're going to set up the brooder to get the chicks started. There are two ways to approach this. Uh, we have feeders and waters. They can all be used for waters or feeders. They're leak proof. For the first week though, I like to use these little units here. And the reason for that is chicks do have a way of getting through these little holes if they're not adjusted just perfectly. So what I like to do is adjust these all the way down, close them off, not even use the side feeders for the first seven days and use these types of items for the first seven days. So I want to just station some waters into the front area of the brooder. And we recommend to put real warm water uh, in the jugs to begin with because when the birds come in, uh, they're ready to be warmed up and that's another way to, to warm up their bodies real quick with the heat. Want a couple feeders to put in. And for the first day, I like to take some soft uh, paper towel with some chick starter on it and just kind of put it off to the side. Next thing we want to do is take our chicks. They usually arrive in some kind of a box similar to this. And you take your chick and just quickly dip their beak in the water so they can find the water and know what the water is all about. And you can see they find it out. They find it real quick and like it, so they go to drinking right away. And it's just a real quick dip. So now we've dipped all the chick's beak in the water. We have the unit all set up. And now what we want to do is put the tops back on. And we do not want to handle the birds for all oh, the first 24 hours. We want to have, let them spend all their time eating and drinking and staying warm and resting up from the trip. And then after that, children or yourself can pick them up and, and touch them. But for the first 24 hours, you just want to make sure that they're okay, they're not too cold, not too hot, and again this unit should be put in a room where there's no draft or wind, uh, a basement, an extra room, shed, uh, that type of thing for the first week or two. So this is the complete brooder uh, that can be purchased from Cackle Hatchery and works real well to get your uh, chicks started the first one to four weeks.